I'm a guy. Can this thing do a, uh, a backflip, you think? Witnesses on the ground didn't know what to think when they saw two F-15s from Portland pursuing a Horizon Air passenger plane over Puget Sound in August of 2018. At the controls, four-year Horizon employee Richard Russell assigned to handle baggage and cargo with no flying experience in constant communication with air traffic control. Just a broken guy, got a few screws loose, I guess. Never really knew it until now. An hour and 13 minutes after takeoff, the FBI says he intentionally crashed into an island south of Seattle and died. What we haven't been able to show you until now is how Richard Russell stole the plane. Surveillance video obtained by Coin6 shows Russell in a dark t-shirt, backpack and flip-flops checking in through employee security at SeaTac just after 2.30 in the afternoon, five hours before he steals the plane. As he goes through the metal detector, you can read the words on his back. The sky's not the limit. He collects his scam belongings from the conveyor. Then he leaves through a door, headed out to do his job. An outside camera shows the plane Russell would steal, a Horizon Q400 owned by Alaska Air. At the top left of your screen, just before 7 p.m., you see Russell arrive in a tow vehicle. He drives behind the plane and reappears at the nose. That's where he attempts to attach the tug. Eight minutes later, Russell is back, driving the tow vehicle to the front of the plane again, where he attached the tow bar. Several minutes pass until you can see Russell inside the cockpit. The FBI says he was familiar with the checklist of actions for starting an airplane and he begins the sequence to bring the engines to life. The process takes him three minutes until the propellers start to turn. Russell then leaves the plane, gets back in the tow vehicle, and as Russell pushes the plane back, you can see at the far right of the screen, another employee pulling cargo or luggage trailers pass by, oblivious to what is happening. Russell turns the passenger plane towards the taxiway. He leaves the tow vehicle and disconnects the unmanned plane with engines running. He drives the tow vehicle out of the way. As soon as he's disconnected, you can see the plane start to creep forward. Moments later, Russell reappears, running towards the left propeller. He pulls down the stairs, climbs into the cockpit, and stops the plane's advance. Employees at the security gate in the foreground have no idea what is happening behind them. Four minutes later, Russell rolls the plane out of view. What happens next is off camera, but you can hear the confusion between the tower and other pilots as Russell gets the plane cutting in line for takeoff. Aircraft on Charlie, uh, lining up one ready one six center, say call sign. That aircraft was passing behind the, uh, the horizon when he was taking off rolling. I don't know what he was doing. Who's the aircraft on runway 16 center? And then air traffic control hears from Russell for the first time. Seattle ground, uh, horizon guy, um, about to take off. It's going to be crazy. His wheels are smoking left and right uh, as they are right now as he's rolling down the runway. All right, I'm not even talking to him. From several different surveillance cameras, you can see Russell and the plane take off smoothly. He came flying out of the uh, cargo area in front of Delta. And there's just a uh, single single pilot in there. He came flying out of nowhere. We didn't even hear. We thought we missed somebody. Tar, you need to call and scramble now. No, we are. He's talking about scrambling the F-15s from Portland, which train every day for hijackings and terrorist threats. It takes just 15 minutes for the F-15s to fly from Portland to Seattle using afterburners to go supersonic. As Russell flew erratically over Puget Sound, the F-15s flanked him. He just needs some help controlling his aircraft. Nah, I, mean, I don't need that much help. I've played some video games before. Air traffic control tried persuading Russell to land safely, including at nearby McCord Air Force Base but he continued dangerous maneuvers before crashing into a small island 73 minutes after his unlikely liftoff.
I got a lot of people that care about me, and uh, it's going to disappoint them to, to hear that I did this. My name is Mike Matthews, uh, a friend of the family. The family has asked me to read this prepared statement. As the voice recordings show, Bebo's intent was not to harm anyone. He was right in saying that there are so many people who have loved him. At this time, the family is moving forward with the difficult task of processing our grief. We appreciate your prayers. Thank you, the family of Bebo Russell. Uh, in a safe, safe kind of manner. I think I'm, uh, I think I'm gonna try to do a barrel roll, and if that goes good, I'll just go nose down and call it a night.